Hi, I'm Michael Feldstein. Welcome back to eLiterate TV. In the last episode of this case study, we learned a little bit about Empire State College and their commitment to one-on-one -on -one personalized education through mentoring and prior learning assessments. In this next episode, we'll learn about how they're trying to maintain that commitment while expanding access to education by experimenting with personalized learning software. Our mission has really evolved to be one to serve students who have normally, many started out in that traditional environment, or many went straight into the workforce, either the military or the other workforce. They come back later, there aren't a lot of systems set up around that for them as a whole. There's not a cohort of non-traditional students who all come together to an orientation and work together course to course. So you really have to get to know the students individually. You're not dealing with the regular uh, traditional age sports, clubs, things like that. You're dealing with parenting, you're dealing with job duties, you're dealing with unemployment duties, you're dealing with aging parents. So on the life side of it, you're dealing with quite a bit that is unique to each and every student. Beyond that, the students really have gained a different sense of what they want out of their academic experience. And they're pretty savvy consumers at that point. It's not just the money, but the time is incredibly important to them. So to sit down and work with them on their goals, and why are they taking the classes, and why does it connect? And if they get prior learning credit, how does that connect into their overall goal, academic goals? How do they glue together into something that's going to get them five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road? In addition to their strong emphasis on personal mentoring, Empire State College has also been an early and consistent innovator in online learning. Recently, the college has been experimenting with adding some adaptive courseware that they have developed using a platform called Cogbooks. You know, I'm, I'm taking that they're spending the time outside of the cyber classroom reading the textbook so that when they come into our discussions, they then start logging on and saying, okay, well, I can now talk about what you're asking us to mm. explain. There's a huge lapse of time in there before I start having connection with the student. So they may have already mislearned some information and the only time I then get to see it is when they start producing that first discussion question answer. And by then it's like, oh, you know, so, so I could have helped you earlier, but now we're sort of past that point. And we have what we call in the industry, I hope it's okay to say this old term, windows of opportunity and that when they happen in the moment that's the time when you can jump in and go okay I can re-instruct you at that point in time when that window is closed you are sort of missed it and then you have to hope for another one later down the line while so-called personalized learning programs are sometimes criticized for moving students lockstep through a linear process Maya emphasizes the choice and control that students have regarding how they go through the content what it is, it's a concept mapping. So they take concepts here, concepts here, and then there's a split off, and those concepts then split off, and then split off, and split off, and then depending on the student now, students can go, okay, I understood that concept, I don't already know that, I already know that concept, so I don't need to go to that one right now. I can skip and go here. So you see a lot of, this is where the individualized and personalized learning comes in, is that, they can then, like a smorgasbord, you pick and choose what you want to learn and then you come in, you do the discussion and you either have more to add to it and a greater enrichment of the experience for yourself but also for your classmates, right? And then there are those who go, okay, I need to go through each, step, each one of these step by step and learn each one and then move down to learning these, and then these, and then these, and then these, and then at the end, they've gotten so much more out of it. I mean, it's, it's that kind of opportunity that I can now watch and go, okay, so you're the kind of learner that I can just basically let you go and do what you need to do. I am not going to be mm -hmm. interrupting your learning path because you have a very positive learning path. I can watch you do this. It's a great pattern. You're going for it, and I'm just going, wonderful. Just come in, do the discussion, do your, your test, and I'm like, A student, perfect. You know, great, way to go. Then I see the ones that are sort of the sporadic. They cut and then they touch and go, and I go, okay, let me see how you're doing. Let me, you know, I have an assessment points, and I can say, all right, so you're doing all right here. Uh-oh, you're starting to struggle here. Oh, okay, let me come in and offer my help, mm -hmm. okay? And what I will do is, 
at that point in time is say, I think you're okay with cog books at this point, but I can supplement it now with something else. Now either it's my conversation that we have about it and say, can I help you not be as confused about what's going on? Or do you need something that's a little bit, a video, another auditory piece maybe, or just another article? Or maybe I just need to go and say, well, you know, give it a moment. You know, just give it a moment. It's okay. Try again, come back and try it again. You know, it's always one of the beauties of this is that you can come back and reassess it one more time, you know. Maya and her colleagues are thoughtful about how this kind of software fits with the holistic approach that ESC takes towards education. The personalized learning part of it is taking ownership. I think it, it motivates. As an adult learner, it's really important to find that you have some control <laughs> over when I go in. I, I know what I want to learn. I hope I know what I want to learn, and I hope I learn it at the end, you know. And those are little, like, objectives that you sort of mark as you're going through the time that we're together. And we are a part of a greater goal, right? We're just one course at one point in your path of learning, right? And that's one of the things I think that's great about Empire State College is that that's known, yeah. you know. We all actually have and interconnected. We are all webbed mm -hmm. at some level together to say, yeah, we know that you're your first time. We know that you're in the middle of your program and we know that you're at the end of your program. Mm -hmm. And so that tells me, okay, so where, you know, if you're first time you need me to support you in this way and get you to the next path of the middle, right? And that mm -hmm. my and yours working together is you're going to then feel like you are um, supported, empowered, mm -hmm. and feel really good about the next step so that you can get to the end and say, yeah, that was exactly what I wanted when I decided to go to college at Empire State mm -hmm. College. That's what I wanted and that's what I got. I agree with Maya about the self-efficacy that um, what we're about is recognizing that the learner comes to the learning environment as a whole person with knowledge and skills and background, and that she or he enters that study, um, and the more that the faculty member can respect what they see um, when that student comes in, because they're, they're mothers, they're, they're teachers in their Sunday school, they are working out in, in the business world, and Maya's going to take the time to work with that student in such a way that respects what he or she is bringing um, to that learning experience. She's going to add new learning. So what I think the technology helps to do is equips Maya with the tools, the content, the, the information that she needs to know more about that learner. So we'll allow her to personalize um, what it is that, that she wants to do. Uh, I also think in the future, um, that Empire State will consider how um, this adaptive technology could allow a student to go completely at his, his or her own pace through a competency-based program. And um, Maya and I have been talking about the ways in which a very independent learner could go through the material um, and then have it assessed independently. Um, and the faculty member would be driving how to, how to create that content in such a way uh, that we might move forward. Um, so I, I think there will be different models at Empire State College. Um, this continued high touch that, uh, that Maya talks about with, with the faculty member, but also something that would respect the very independent learner who might want to move fairly quickly through material and document what it is that he or she knows. So this is an, actually um, an interesting point. Generally, we hear a debate, an either or. Either we are going to personalize the learning and focus on what we consider to be quality interactions, or we're going to scale or increase access and focus on letting students move through quickly at their own pace, affordably, and that there is a 
a trade-off between those two, and maybe there is a trade-off. But what I hear you talking about is that allowing students to choose between those paths is a kind of personalization. Absolutely, and I mean, time is one of the greatest commodities of both adult students and faculty. Um, and so having for those students who can work independently the ability to save time and or money uh, to pursue but still get a high quality education, I think we need different models in higher education. I, you know, this field, um, we need to evolve in our thinking about teaching and learning and what's valuable, you know, what, what's important to students. And, you know, I, I think a unique thing about Empire State College is those debates that you talk about in higher education, they exist everywhere. But here I think faculty are more interested in engaging in those debates and talking about why, why you might consider programs like, like this adaptive learning. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think that that's really an important piece of it is choices. Debates among the faculty regarding the value and role of personalized learning technologies in an ESC education are clearly ongoing. There's a funny thing that's occurred. Part of the spirit of mentoring and the desire to have alternative higher education, especially for adults in a mentoring model, was a critique of anonymity. It wasn't only a critique of authority, it was a critique of anonymity. It was a cr critique of somebody going to the University of California and being in a 3,000 person lecture class with a TA. Um, so the idea of so-called personalized or mentoring was very much attached to a criticism of a world in which education was so distant from the immediacy of somebody's experience, understanding, and interest that it was just going through the hoops. I think we're at a funny position now where the same thing's happening. Um, uh, I think that part of the talk of personalization, which I'm wary of, and I can say something about that, is that there is a fear that while access could have won out or at least one out compared to what it was 50 years ago, a new systems of anonymity have emerged. And thus we're back where we were. Um, and that's why I think mentoring and personalization stuff um, is a bigger deal now. Um, when I started and said something to you about like, you know, 50 years ago, not many institutions, some, but not many institutions were talking about mentoring. You probably can't find a corporation in America right now that doesn't have a mentoring program. Mm -hmm. So in the same critical spirit, I think, that we had 40 years ago, or that people had 40 years ago, I think we now have to ask, wait a second. Is there a difference between fake mentoring and something called authentic mentoring? Or when does personalization become just a cloak for new forms of control that claim to speak, you know, in the same way that a bank wants to give you individual service and claim personalization. I mean, Chase Manhattan Bank could use those terms. How do you discern, how, how do you really make a distinction between what is attending to an individual person or a group of people's interests and what is, I think, fraudulent, really fraudulent? Now, uh, I don't have the answer to this, and I think it's hard because the work of mentoring as Empire State College has learned and many other institutions have learned is immensely labor intensive. College President Meredith Hancock has been thinking a lot about the difficult balancing act between maintaining the school's commitment to a personal education and increasing access to college. What do machines do well and what aspects of education must only be entrusted to people? You've got a program that works very well for its historical size. How do you, what are you learning about maintaining quality while increasing access? It's hard. <laughs> Our students are by default at risk. They either did not go to college right out of high school when their study skills were the strongest, or they went to college and dropped out for any number of reasons. So by default, they're at risk. They, they need to learn to study again. They need to 
sometimes build up quantitative research, other skills. They're normally scared. Most of us, do, I don't like to be in a spot where I don't know what's going on. They're successful in their career. They're used to being an adult and suddenly they're in a spot where they don't understand the terms you're using. They don't understand what's going on and they feel out of control. So we need to work with them quite a bit. Technology is great in that it can give some of that information to them when they want it. They can find it privately if they don't understand an idea. I sit in several meetings where somebody will say something and you nod your head and later you go back and you look it up online and find out what it really meant. They can do that repeatedly with learning objects. They can go back and rewatch a discussion, rework a problem. They can register, they can look at their financial aid, they can work on a class. If they have free time at two in the morning, it's their time to do it. Technology helps with all of that. The best exciting part of technology now, if we use it correctly, is the data. Learning what data trends might impact success. Does a student need you to call them? We can't call every student weekly and say, how are you doing? But we might have more informed early warning systems to say, now is the time that we use that critical human resource to reach out to a student and say, how can we help you? It might help in what classes they take. And there's a lot of colleges that are using this in various ways. For us, it helps us free up again the personnel to work one-on-one -on -one with the students as they need. And it makes more and more of the services, the learning available, students learn differently. Given Empire State's history, we probably shouldn't be surprised that they're neither dogmatically for nor dogmatically against personalized learning software. From their perspective, personalizing doesn't start with the software, it starts with the person. This might be an important lesson to learn throughout the rest of the series.